Today's Namaste Yoga is the second in our cultural conditioning series. Hello and welcome to episode 172 of Namaste Yoga. Today's class is on our addiction to busy. And I have a testimonial to share with you today to begin from Veronica from Norway. She says, I just wanted to send a big thank you from Norway. I started doing your classes on YouTube right after New Year. I've been struggling with neck and shoulder problems for several years now and the last year has been really troubled. I have had tons of physiotherapeutic, manual therapeutic, and chiropractic treatments, and it has helped for a while, but then right back to the start. Now I have no treatments, just my yoga on my living room floor, and I feel fantastic. I feel better than I have in years, and I want to thank you for that. I feel calmer and become more aware of my body in everyday life how I breathe, how I hold and carry myself and my body, how I sit and walk, how I can do things better for myself. I talk about you all the time to my friends, family and colleagues, how they need to check out your lessons and your practice and the beautiful person as you are. They all really deserve what you do to help people with their everyday life. Personally, I can't wait to continue this journey. As one of your pupils and followers have said before I have a yoga teacher and she lives in Canada and it works out perfect for me as I can ha do it in my own home so thank you Melissa for what you do thank you for leaving your comments on my website through my voicemail YouTube and five-star ratings on iTunes instructions on how to do that are at thank you Melissa.com so this week we added new content to our membership site. We added off the wall yoga. It's a whole class against the wall and the members are loving that. They're finding it surprisingly challenging. It challenging. And also we added five 20 minute classes um, for head, shoulders, knees, toes with a bonus class for your hands and wrists. So thank you to Squeezed yoga clothing for our yoga clothing. I'm wearing some of the brand new spring line right now, the flying heart design. This is one of the brand new bamboo uh, bra cami tops. It's got a little shelf bra in it. It's super comfortable because it's bamboo. And then there are matching capri yoga pants with it. And it's got the flying heart design on it as well. So love those. And thank you to Dusky Leaf for our yoga mat and our cork blocks that we'll be using today. I also really love my really big yoga bag and my strap. And last week you saw my awesome bolster that they gave me too. John's got some new bolsters coming out as well. So lots of exciting things on the horizon there. Okay, for today's class, you're going to need a um, block and a folded blanket or a meditation cushion, maybe a chair for a seated breath practice we're going to be doing. But you can go ahead and rest back now to begin our class. So go ahead and make yourself comfortable lying down on your back. And if your low back is tender, you can always bend your knees and place your feet flat on the floor, or even put a bolster under your knees. And take a deep breath in, and let it fall out of your mouth. 
Let yourself settle in now to receive the teachings of yoga. Today's class is our second class on cultural conditioning. And cultural conditioning are the social processes in which authority figures such as parents, professors, politicians, religious leaders, peers, and the media define our cultural values, beliefs, ethical systems, and ultimately the way we perceive ourselves in the world. The second perception we are going to deconstruct in our series is our addiction to busy. This is another one that Brené Brown points out in her book, Daring Greatly. She says that we are obsessed with being busy. We actually numb out on busy very much in the same way that we might numb out on a glass of wine or a chocolate eclair or food or shopping. Busy can be another way to numb out. Sometimes we numb out on social media. But keeping busy is another way to numb out. So invite this awareness of the addiction to busy as you reflect right now. But as you move off your mat, bring this awareness of the addiction to busy as you move throughout your day. Notice your inclination to always be doing something. And not just one thing, but multiple things. We pride ourselves on multitasking. In fact, you've probably put it on your resume, ability to multitask. Can you just sit and have your breakfast or do you have to be reading a book or newspaper, watching TV or checking your email on your PDA at the same time? Can you simply stand in the line at the grocery store or do you have to pick up a magazine, check Facebook, make a phone call, or perform some other task while you're waiting? Reflect for a moment on your schedule. Is it rammed full every second? With appointments and activities? Or do you have downtime and blank space in your calendar. When somebody asks you, how are you? How often do you respond with, I'm so busy, or I've been so busy? We wear our identification as busy like a badge of honor. If we stopped, we might have to check in with how we really feel in our bodies, minds, emotions, and spirits. Busy allows us to numb out so we don't have to feel. Then we come to yoga, yoga class and the teacher asks us to be still. This goes against our cultural conditioning to stay busy and it feels uncomfortable. I can't tell you the number of times I've had people ask me to give them something to do while I ask them to listen while I talk at the beginning. So what do we do when we come to yoga? We actually have to tune out the voices of culture, which encourage us to work longer hours, to produce, produce more, 
to buy more things that we might not even need and tune inward. This is called pratyahara. Turning your senses inward. The easiest way to do this is to focus on your breathing. Follow your breath as it moves in to your body and notice your breath as it moves out of your body. So it is that simple. Breathe and notice your breath. There is no need to fix or change your breath. There is no better or best way to breathe in this moment. Just notice your breath. Be busy noticing your breath. And when your mind tells you this is a waste of time, that you have a lot of other things that you could be busy with, come back to your breath. So as you rest back here, reflect on all the ways you numb out on busy in your life. And set an intention for what you would like to receive in this yoga class. And then when you're ready, you can wiggle and stretch out. And bend your knees. Roll to your side. And come up to seated. So when you come up to seated, we're going to do alternate no nostril breathing today to start our class. So you'll take your left hand and place it in the Gyan Mudra, thumb and index finger together. Extend your other three fingers. You can rest that on your lap. Your right hand, you'll extend your first two fingers and rest it in the center of your forehead. Close off your right nostril. Breathe in through your left nostril. Close your left nostril with the ring finger. Breathe out through your right nostril. Breathe in right nostril. Close right, breathe out left. Breathe in left. Close left, breathe out right. Breathe in right. Close right, breathe out left. Breathe in left. Close left, breathe out right. Breathe.
breathe in, right? Close right, breathe out left. Breathe in left. Close left, breathe out right. Breathe in right. Close right, breathe out left. And continue with this on your own breath rhythm. And the next time you breathe out through your left nostril, you can bring your right hand down. I chose that breath because it really slows things down and it creates a real balance in your body. So I think when you're busy all the time, it's really unbalanced way of being. You're go, go, go. And... Um, this slows things right down. It balances your masculine and feminine way of being. So uh, busy, busy, busy is masculine doing, doing, doing. Whereas the alternate nostril breathing balances the masculine, feminine uh, doing and receiving. So it puts things back into balance, which I really like. And it's kind of a busy breath, so you can be busy doing your breathing <laughs> and it really calms things down so it brings you into that calm receptive state rather than that state of busy which is a great state to be in so from here we're going to go into a lunge pose okay so come on to all fours and you'll step your left leg through and lean into a lunge pose until you feel an opening in the front of your right hip and then sink down through your front left foot and come upright and bring your right arm up to help increase that stretch through the front of your right hip.
And then take your right elbow to the outside of your left knee and add a twist to that. And then come back to the center, reach your right arm up again, and just give a little side bend to the left. And then come back to the center, we're gonna do lunge pose on the other side. Look where I banged myself this morning on the bed post. <laughs> it really hurts. <laughs> You have one of those low beds, those low Ikea beds, and the corners of those, they jump out and bite you sometimes. <laughs> okay. <coughs> Often, they have teeth, I swear. Okay, now your right foot comes through, and you're gonna sink down to your right foot, feel stretch to the front of your left hip. Come upright. Take your left arm up. Okay, now you take your left elbow to the outside of your right knee and twist. And then come back to the center, sink down through your right foot, reach your left arm up, and then a little side bend over to the right side. And then release, we're going to come back to the first side <coughs> and have a square lunge here. And you're going to reach your right arm up and over to the back of your right heel. So you're doing, it's like a half camel here. Now if you can't reach, this is where your block comes in handy. You can take your block to the outside of your right ankle and reach up and over there. And then come forward. And we'll do this on the other side. So you'll switch sides. So you're going to have a square lunge. Both legs are at a 90 degree angle. So this is a variation on camel pose. A whole lot easier. <laughs> you're going to tuck your tailbone under. Reach your left arm up and over. Look over at your left heel. Reach your right arm over.
And then you can come back up. Great. It's a nice variation on camel. A lot easier. Okay. And then we're going to come up to standing. So we'll come through downward facing dog. standing we're going to do a standing side bend and then tree pose the idea is that we can do yoga poses that are simple we don't have to be get all busy <laughs> in our yoga class either sometimes you can go to yoga class and be really busy <laughs> and so I wanted this class to be not too busy so we're going to inhale take our arms up overhead and exhale and side bend So as you side bend to the right, reach down through the outside of your left foot. And then inhale up to the center. And exhale and side bend over to the left, reach down through the outside of your right foot. And this side bending kind of mirrors that alternate nostril breathing that we were doing at the beginning of the class as well. And then come back up to standing. And exhale, lower your arms down. And from here, we'll do tree pose. So stand on your right foot. Turn your left toes out to the side. You can keep your toes on the ground. You can pick them up, put them on the inside of your foot uh, leg, <laughs> either above or below your knee, but not on your knee joint. So choose a place to put your foot. Draw up through your pelvic floor, draw your navel back to your spine. Keep your hands at your heart center. You could take your hands overhead as well. Find a point to focus on that's not moving. And let your attention settle on your breath. And then release your left foot. Place your left foot on the ground. Spread your feet, feel your heel on the ground, feel the balls of your feet behind your toes on the ground. And then turn your right toes out and place them somewhere on the inside of your left leg, either above or below your knee. Lengthen your whole left leg down out of your pelvis. 
<clears throat> and take your hands at your heart center. Find a point to focus on that's not moving. And then find a way to let this posture out of your body. Take a deep breath in. Let it fall out of your mouth. Okay, so come to the front of your mat for our inversion. Today we're going to hang out in downward facing dog. So just come to the front of your mat and take a deep breath in. Exhale, hinge forward through your hips. You can bend your knees here. Place your hands flat on the ground, spread your fingers really wide, step back through your feet. Reach your hips up towards the ceiling. You can bend your knees and spread your palms wide. Let your spine be long. You can open your heels up towards the ground and let your head hang here. Just really simple, breathing and hanging. And then bend your knees and come on down. And we're going to do a twist. So you're going to sit with your legs in a zigzag. So bend your left knee behind your right knee and you're going to ground down through your left buttocks as much as you can. And then you're gonna take your left hand to the outside of your right knee. And then come back to the center and switch your legs so that your left knee is bent in front of your right knee. And this time, try and drop down through your right buttocks as much as you can. Inhale, exhale. Take your right hand to the outside of your left knee.
and then go back to the center. Gonna take your legs straight out in front of you. And here you might want to elevate yourself a bit on a cushion or a blanket so that you can do your forward fold a little more easily. So bend your left leg, open it out to the side. Inhale. And exhale and hinge forward over your straight right leg. Keep your ears back over your shoulders. Ease and steadiness in the pose. Nothing busy going on. Just ease and steadiness. And then hinge forward back up through your hips. Bring your right knee in, extend your right leg out. Bend your left leg in, open your left knee out to the side. Lift up nice and tall. <coughs> Inhale and exhale, hinge forward over your straight leg. Notice what's happening in your body where you feel sensation. And follow your breath in and out. And then hinge back up through your hips. And come to a comfortable seated position. We're going to do alternate nostril breathing again. So for alternate nostril breathing, take your thumb and index finger together on your left hand and just place it on your left knee, your right hand, your first two fingers extend and rest in the center of your forehead. Close your right nostril. Breathe in through your left nostril. Close your left nostril. Breathe out through your right nostril. Breathe in right. Close right. Breathe out left. Breathe in left. Close left, breathe out right. Breathe in right. Close right, breathe out left. Breathe in left. Close left, breathe out right. Breathe in right.
close right, breathe out left. And keep going with that. And then the next time you breathe out through your left nostril, you can bring your right hand down. And breathe through both nostrils. And feel the effect of the breath practice for you. Then I'm going to get you to lie on your back. We're going to do a recline twist to get you into Shavasana. Okay, so once you're lying on your back, we're going to do an um, alligator twist. It's a bent leg twist. You're going to bend your right knee. Take your arms out to your side in a soft T. Press into your right foot. Tuck your left hip under and cross your right knee over to your left side. Look over your right shoulder. And then come back to the center, press into your right foot, untuck your hips, extend your right leg out, bend your left knee, press into your left foot, tuck your right hip under, cross your left knee over to your right side, look over your left shoulder. And then roll back onto your back, press into your left hip, untuck your hips, 
and extend your legs out bring your palms down by the side of your body tuck your shoulders under and you can rest back for shavasana So you can stay here. I'm going to come to seated to read you some closing thoughts. So I have a quote that goes with our class about the addiction to busy from Jerry Lishan's Yoga Teacher's Handbook. And this quote is by Indira Gandhi. And she says, if you can learn to become vibrantly alive during periods of stillness, then you will be serenely calm during periods of great activity. If you can learn to become vibrantly alive during periods of stillness, then you will be serenely calm during periods of great activity. Gradually allow your breath to deepen. (coughs) 
wiggle and stretch out. Bend your knees and roll to your right side. And make your way up to sitting. Thank you for joining us for episode 172 of Namaste Yoga. Thank you for leaving your comments on the class below. And if you have any ideas for cultural conditioning that you'd like to see debunked in this series with yoga, then leave them in the comments below. Namaste. Thank you.